Welcome, 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 welcome. It's Sabbath. This is this is a, a great day. I, I I can you tell I'm excited. I love the Sabbath. I love it. 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 Now I, I've got a couple of things I need to get done real quick. So I'm gonna get right to it. Uh wanna say a word of welcome to everybody that's joining us from quite literally all over the country and all over the world. Somebody said Zambia was in the house. I love it. Uh I saw one of our moderators put in the chat any first time. I didn't see anybody respond to her. Any first timers? I'm also seeing a lot of seven for seven plus two. All right. So this this is day seven. So that means if you've been here all week, you've been here all seven days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, seven. And then you also were here for maybe last Sabbath's message and then for Wednesday night's message. So there's the plus two. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I listen, I, I'm with you. Seven for seven, seven for seven plus two. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. And today you're getting a double dose. <laughs> I want to say that you're going to get double dose. Now, 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 all of you guys are doing your thing in the chat. I want to ask you this. How many of you got a chance to tune into uh, Breath of Life last night for the Vision Lab, where myself and Pastor Snell, as, as the hosts of Vision Lab, got a chance to interview uh, Pastor Freddie Russell? Let me tell you, if that thing was not a, a, a setup for... Uh, the excuseless series and those who have visions and dreams. I mean, it was just so perfect for those who are looking to live this excuseless life. You need to go back and check out that episode. Now we told you about it yesterday. I know some of you may have missed it, but I'm telling you, this was one you needed to check out. And for those that don't aren't aware, those things are recorded in advance. Uh, so we we recorded that I think in February. And so for it to air last night, the first Friday of this 21 days of prayer under the theme excuseless, that is just a God thing. Like that, the way that all worked out was a God thing. So that is, that is absolutely amazing. And we're excited for that. Let's get our covenant up on screen. And yes, 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 yes. You know, I want you to recite this with me. Don't make me say it by myself. All right, here we go. Let's go on three, three, two, one. Today, I continue the journey toward excuseless living. I recognize that excuses are kryptonite to my soul and cancer to my calling. I make a covenant to stop lying to myself about why I pray so little, fall so often, procrastinate so frequently, neglect my health, live without structure, and leave family outcomes up to chance. I will add focus to essential things and withdraw focus from optional things. I will focus less on what I'm lacking and stand in the promise of God's supply. I will reclaim my time, budget my energy, and withhold oxygen from all excuses. This is the season. This is the time. I feel my help. Let the revolution begin. I claim God's power to become excuseless. Now, if, it, if you're standing on your feet and running around the room right now, just know that I want to be with you. That is a rallying cry. That covenant will, will get you up and running. In fact, somebody said, when are you going to make that covenant downloadable? I got to figure out a way for us to do that. I was talking to Pastor Paul about that yesterday. We got to figure out a way to make that covenant downloadable so you guys can have it printed out and you can recite it as you go through your book, as you go through your book. Now, today's chapter was a tough one. I'm going to just, can I just say that, man? Now, whew, do the do the hard part first. My goodness. And we're excited. <laughs> we are excited that we have we have Dean Linda Anderson with us today to, to, to take us through this chapter and to engage with us around this concept of doing the hard part first. But man, I just I just want to welcome you. I just want to welcome you. I just want to welcome you. I just want to welcome you and say happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Excuseless fam. Happy Sabbath, Oakwood University Church family. Happy Sabbath, Breath of Life family. We are excited for all that God is going to do in this space today. And this is our 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 our, our wake up call. I know several so our numbers aren't where they usually are because it's Sabbath. Several people are in prep mode. They're already on their way to church. Some of you are watching. Tell the truth. Some of you are watching in the car, <laughs> in the parking lot of your church. It's okay to be honest this morning. But 618 devices are with us, and we would ask that you tag a friend. Let them know that this thing is is here, and we're not going to be long. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we're so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We're thankful that you are here, that God, we know you're here. 
we 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 feel your presence even though we are only connected by the internet we feel you in this space so father we ask that you would bless keep god protect we pray god that for those who are intent on living an excuseless life that you would bring to their awareness that you would make them sensitive towards the areas in which you have not been allowed access and so that you can continue to do this good work that you have begun in them and that they too can live a life that is exemplary, that is a testimony of your goodness and your faith and what you can do with the willing. It won't make sense on paper when see people see what we're able to do. It won't make sense in the equations and the strategies of man. But when we add our willingness to, to the equation that equals God, we know that the miraculous is possible. Father, bless our speaker this morning as well. Be with our conversation. Bless those who are here, those who are coming, those who will watch the replay. For we ask these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> I started laughing while, while the, the music was playing because Shelly Shelley Orozco says in the chat, yup, watching in the car. <laughs> Indeed. It's, it's okay to be, it's, it's okay to be honest this morning. And That's at least right. She's not driving and watching. <laughs> oh, Dean, good morning and happy Sabbath to good you. Good morning. Oh, happy Sabbath. Oh, man. Happy Sabbath. Happy a Sabbath. day of rest. Praise yes. God. Or for me, you know, less we, work. <laughs> you know, so we did the reset. We did the reset series at the beginning of the year, and it was not the same without Dean Anderson. It wasn't. Oh my goodness. So, so, so I am super excited to have you back. And I want to say oh, this to those you. who are who are going to be who who have co, who are making the decision to be with us every day of the twenty one days. Dean's going to be with us every Sabbath. Okay. Can Amen. I just put that out there right now? By the grace so, of God, I will be right here. By the, by the grace <laughs> of God. Oh my word. Listen, I have been asking, I have been asking this question. I mean, oh, they're and they're welcoming you in the chat, by the way. Oh, they hello missed you too. There. They missed you too. Hi they missed there. you too. God bless you. I have been asking all our speakers, Dean, and I'm I'm almost, you know, I feel like <laughs> there are some people when you ask them a question, it could derail the whole thing. I mean, you, you, you better you get can, ready. It can turn left. So I already know with you this is a problem. Uh, we 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 have the <laughs> the same issue, the gift of gab. So so I will ask you this, and I hope we can tie it into some of the other questions that we're going to get into today. But in what area of your life do you hear God saying, "It's we're done. No more excuses there." Oh, no more excuses. When I say I, almost every area. Um, oh my, you know, oh it's my, funny oh because um, as I was reading this chapter, and you and I mm. talked a little bit before um, the, the, the broadcast this morning, yep. uh, God takes you through places in your life where you feel uncomfortable and you don't understand why you have to go through this. But the purpose for going through that is to get you ready for the next thing. And so mm. when you're in the midst of the bad situations, you're, you're, formulating your excuses for why you can't do the bigger things. You wow. don't even realize you're doing it, but I, wow. you know, I, recently I, I had, sci, I have sciatica. And so that has become my most regularly seized upon excuse. I reach for it. Like I reach for the McKay's um, seasoning <laughs> in my cupboard every time I make soup or, Come on, or, or, or sauce. So I, you know, I understand that God wants me to do some things. I have a friend who's been, needling me and bothering me and annoying me for years that Linda, you need to go back to school. I said, girl, when am I going to study? I'm so busy trying to take care of other students who are studying, but I feel like mm. God is tapping me on the shoulder and saying, oh, you must think that you're going to be doing that on your own. That's why you're saying you can't do it because oh, my, you're under the my, misunderstanding my. that you're going to be doing that on your own. So it's Oof. that, it's my health, it's my relationships, it's my ability to self uh, provide myself with care. I'm horrible at self-care. I will mm. take care of everybody else. I'll limp around helping everybody else and not help myself. And God is saying, you better take care of yourself because 
I'm going to need you to do some things. And if your body is not in the, the condition to be able to do what I'm going to call you to do, it's going to be nobody's fault but yours. Mine, uh, like mine, Elder mine. Kelly used to say, nobody's fault nobody's but mine. Fault. <laughs> mine. So those are some areas. And, and I think it, it trails off uh, from that road to, to different places yeah. in my life. But the ultimate um, excuse that I use is one that covers everything. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Wow. I'm tired. And everybody has that excuse. Mm. And so how do we, how do we overcome that? What, what, there's a challenge in finding a way to get past the, I'm tired and let, let the Lord infuse you with his power and his strength so that you yeah. can do the things that he's calling you to do. Yeah, uh, so those yeah, are yeah. just some of the areas that I'm willing to share right here, right now. There are Listen. some others that I, I only utter to myself in secret <laughs> as I attempt to get le, on the le, le, you, 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 you keep you keep those. Putting you on keep the those. is my morning workout. Yeah, put, Listen. putting on a Spanx Listen. is my morning workout. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I wanna I wanna grab this one comment real quick here. This is uh from Lorita Lorita Mills. Lorita Mills uh is asking, how do I get the book? And I wanna say, sis, there is a link right in the description of the if you just expand the description, you'll see the title. And if you expand that description, you're watching on YouTube, so you expand that so it says a little button that says see more. If you click that, there is a link there, book two links. You can buy it on uh, from Breath of Life, or you can buy it on Amazon, either one. Right? Amazon is a little more expensive, but either way, you've got two options right there to be able to get the book. And I just wanted to touch on that. I keep on forgetting to mention that uh, in the lead in, but I want to make sure that those who don't have the book you have a way to book. get. Yes, you will want this book. You will want, you this, will book. want this book. You will want this book. Uh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Some of the comments are coming in guilty as charged. This is in response to what you're saying, Dean. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pamela Moyo says, yes, I'm tired is one of my excuses. This is another one coming in, Dean. Uh, yup, that's a regular excuse. And she put the, 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 the tired emoji in there. I love that. I love that. Thank you, Dean, for sharing this information. It speaks volumes to me. There it is. Hashtag I'm tired. Samuel Moody puts in there. Ouch, Dean, you're preaching already. <laughs> We, we, we got started early. We got started early. Well, Dean, we're going to we're going to dive right in is we're going to dive right into to all that we know God is is going to share today. Um, uh, somebody says you need this book. I totally agree. You, you definitely need this book. So, Dean, let me let me let me start by asking this this question um, as, as it pertains to the chapter and, and you know, the, the focal character uh, that we are looking at, at least in the beginning. No. Moses, exactly. Now, because, you know, as people think about it, as people look at it, uh, they recognize that we don't all benefit, uh, we don't all have the benefit of a burning bush, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we know that God is instructing us in our brave approach? <laughs> so, you know, we, it's, it's, it's an aspirational phrase right there, our brave right, approach. Right. To, to uncomfortable and sometimes even anxiety provoking tasks? How, how, do we, how do we know, like, how do we have sure found that God is instructing us without the burning bush? Well, here's the thing. I, I love this chapter because essentially what it is telling us is I'm gonna give you an example of somebody who had to go through what I'm asking you to go through in, in a, a smaller dose. Mm. Um, Moses. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And Moses did have the burning bush. Yes. But he needed that burning bush because he, if anyone in the Bible or anyone in history had um, a right to have excuses, it was Moses. If you think about it, just imagine if you're being asked to go and tell the head ruler, mm -hmm. you're going to do this because I'm coming to tell you this in the name of the Lord. Moses could have said, listen, I, I, listen, I can't do this. I was sent down the river. I was raised by people who are not my family. Mercy. I can't do it. I killed a man. I, I can't yep. do it I, yep. because on top of all those other things, I had to flee. And now I'm trying to uh, figure out how I can help save my real family. And on top of all of that, I have a speech impediment. Mm. Moses needed that burning bush to burn off all of the excuses that he could have had not to do what God was calling him to do. And so here we are. And although we do not have a literal burning bush, God is using different measures in each of our lives that are 
that equate to the same method. He's going to give you a sign. He's going to give you instruction. Maybe this series right here is your burning bush. Maybe the call that you received last week from a friend who said, you are on my mind. I've been praying for you. And I know mm. that you've got a big task ahead. I know mm. that you have this huge thing that is about to happen in your life. And I'm praying for you. That's your burning bush. Without yeah. the actual burning bush, God calls us to do things by telling us in his word. Here's one of the ways. Um, he says, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, the mm. peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's your burning bush. We mm. have to recognize that God is not calling us uh, to a place where our excuses let us off the hook. God is calling to uh, us to a place where our excuses become null and void because he's given us purpose. And I love to think of it like this. We have to understand, first of all, the difference in excuse. Keep going, keep going. Sorry, We sorry. have to know the difference between an excuse and a reason. And oftentimes we get them confused. But when we understand the difference between an excuse and a reason, we understand that um, an excuse passes blame or lays blame to something uh, as a reason for why they cannot accept responsibility. Excuses are a crutch. Reasons are an explanation of circumstances outside of our control. But if we're not careful, reasons can become excuses if we don't take responsibility. So reasons bear responsibility. And we're in this book digesting the fact that we are to live an excuseless existence because God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has not told us that we are off the hook. He has said, I've called you by name. You're mine. This is what I need you to do. This is what I need for you to understand. You are the one I've selected for this because you can do it. I don't make blind and purposeless uh, assignments. I assign people to tasks that I know that I want them to do because they're more than capable because I'm in it with them. So one of the ways that we can approach even our greatest fears and the most uncomfortable or anxiety provoking tasks is by letting the burning bushes in our lives mm. help us just as much as the literal burning bush that was not consumed help Moses. We are, we are human, we're mortal. Moses was mortal. He just had a God who he recognized as God. Ooh. Ooh. And that God who he recognized as God brought him through all of the challenges that lay ahead of him. Ooh. It's that simple. There, there, that, there's a, there's a, that is a profound. He had a God that he recognized. He recognized. I think there's, there is, there's a level of, of insensitivity to the movements of God in our lives. When you talked about mm -hmm. that friend that calls you and says, hey, you were on my mind. Do we mm -hmm. recognize that that's a God thing? Yeah. That it, how did they know yeah. that you were dealing with it? How did they know you were in the valley of decision? How did they know that you were, you were exactly. getting ready to make some excuses? How did they know? Do we recognize the acts and movements of God simply because they're not, they don't look like, they don't manifest as a burning bush because all of us have a burn. Man, that's so good. Oh man, man, listen. <laughs> and, you know, we, we, we question whether or not it's the right time for things like I was sharing earlier. Is it mm -hmm. the right time for me to go to school? Is it, is it the right time for me to make this move to take this other position, this other job? I'm comfortable here. But we have to recognize that the lesson being conveyed is that the best time to approach a challenging situation or even yeah. a frightening situation is early, right away. The right away. Is, oh. is about timing. Everything yeah. is about timing and God's yeah. timing is perfect. And if he's called you to it in the midst of your, in the ninth month of your pregnancy, mercy. if God calls you to adopt a child in the ninth month of your pregnancy, God, it's about God's timing. And he knew that was the best time because now you can raise these two babies together. You there don't, you go. we, God's ways are past finding out. And once we understand the fact that God sees from the aerial perspective, what we see from only the horizontal view, mm. we will, then if we understand that God is looking at the totality of our life and he knows from beginning to end what he has purposed for us, if we recognize that, then we don't 
squabble with God about, but is it the right That's time? It. We sometimes it, try to uh, bargain with God and say, mercy. God, but can I just, but God, may I just, but if I just, and we ought to simply say, I was talking to a young lady the other day and she was giving me all the reasons why she was not able to do what I was asking her to do, which was clean the room. Mm. And I said, I needed her to clean the room. <laughs> clean the she, room went down a long list. You, she went down a long list of reasons why she couldn't finally, when she was going back and forth with me. And I finally said, can you just say, okay, can you just say, okay, can you just say, and okay, we are, we are like the children, like this, this era <laughs> of children, this generation of children has the audacity to go back and forth. And I had tried to go back and forth with my mother. No, when I came to, <laughs> I would have understood. Back to yourself. <laughs> yes. When I came to myself, when I woke up in the emergency room. Yes. And yes. they told me, you, you've just come out of a coma. That's it. That's Praise it. God. <laughs> Praise God. I would, I would have realized that going back and forth with my mother is not a good thing. Not a good it's not We an go option. back and forth with God. Yeah. We go back yes, and forth we with do. God. But God. Mercy. But God. Can I just, or will you just, or God, if you'll do this, I'll do bargaining with God. Mm. God is God. You ain't got no bargaining power. Mercy. You have no bargaining power. If he's given you a task, he trusts you with it. Trust him to give you what you need in it. If God trusts you with it, you need to trust him enough to know that he's going to help you to achieve that hard thing. Do the hard part first first and that was hard for me i said pastor snell is all peeking all up in my life he's talking about the snooze <laughs> button and exercise all in the same chapter ah, in the same chapter because in the it has to be in the same chapter i've seen and, but the truth of the matter is even this right here is a burning bush it is Ooh, that's this is good a burning bush. God is going to give you the information that you need and the power to succeed at the task he's given you. If you will simply say, okay, 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 okay. My, the my, best my, thing my, you can my. ever say to God is okay. Listen, because I, I, the truth of the matter is there are few people who would ever, uh, if given the choice, choose to do the hardest part first in any assignment. It's so Yet true. Every one of us in life is going to face some giants and some trying experiences and some difficulties and uh, challenges and discomforts. But if God has called us to face it, there is no number of excuses that will safely or, or satisfy the need to simply obey. To simply obey. No number of excuses will satisfy the need to simply obey. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So, so let, okay. let's, let's, dig, let's dig a little deeper. So, cause, because, <clears throat> I mean, I love that. I think somebody, Somebody, somebody needed to hear that this, this is your burning bush. Okay. This, mm -hmm. the, the fact that it's in your hands, the fact that God led you here mm -hmm. in whatever course or sequence of events that led you to know about this series, that is your burning bush. And I love that. That's but if bush. we, if we miss, let's say we miss the first opportunity, right? Is that a sign that we should give up or, or do we look for another opportunity to do the hard thing in life? I mean, because, you know, does it, is it, is it linear? Do we, does it just happen once and we're in trouble? Um, if we miss that first opportunity, does it sometimes show up? Talk to us about that part, um, the opportunity to I, do the hard thing in life. Go ahead. We are going to look for reasons not to do the hard thing. And so if we Absolutely. miss an opportunity for some of us, that becomes our excuse. Well, I, 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 when I had the chance, I couldn't do it. I, I, but God tells us in his word, Galatians mm. 6, 9, let us not grow weary in well-doing. Well-doing. For in due season. <laughs> you shall. And only God knows what that due season <laughs> what is. What that due season in is. In due season, you'll reap if you faint not. You can't mm. give up. You can't give in. You can't concede. Because imagine, if you will, if Jesus had used excuses for why he couldn't do the big thing first, the hardest part first. The hardest wow. part was dying to save us. So just imagine if Jesus had given excuses. Um, okay, you want me to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, but I have low blood sugar. I, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah, I, I'll, yeah. yeah I'm, on, I'm, I'm on these medications. I got to eat something. Or yeah, yeah. I need you to carry this cross, but I have a bad back, God. Yeah, I, yeah. Father, yeah, I have God, a bad I, back. I've got sciatic. Be... I can't do yeah. it. Or, you know that. what? I need yeah. you to, first of all, I need you to go to earth. I need mm, you to mm. go to earth Mercy. and leave heaven 
well, I've got, but I got a lot of stuff going on in heaven right now, God. Yeah, yeah, Imagine yeah. if Jesus had given excuses for Ooh. why he couldn't do the hard part first. Because remember, he did the hard part first, which allowed us to have salvation, allowed, allowed us to, us to live again. Oh. He did the hard part first. He did the hard part first. That's good. And he did the hard part before heaven. And yes, he so did. Before bef we can bef even get to heaven, he did the hard part. So if Jesus, who was both God and man, could do the hard part first, if you feel that you've missed an opportunity, you don't have the right to say, I can't, because Jesus did not say, I can't. Oof. People weren't listening. He could have said, they're not listening. I'm go he, could have, he had every reason to give excuses. He knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane and prayed so hard, blood came through his pores. Mercy. Yet he did the hard part first. first. I don't think one of us can ever say that we have had to die to save. <sighs> so if God has given you something, your hard part ain't nearly, it can't even be compared. Our light affliction, which mm. is but for a moment. For a moment. It can't even be compared. So Ooh. yes, you may, it, you may fail. But the only failure is in not continuing to try to do my, what God my, has my, purposed my, my. for you to do. <laughs> not doing what God has purposed you to do. You do not give up. You cannot afford to give up. You Oof. take every chance, but you do not give up. up. You may not have had, you might not have had a successful end the, the first go round in doing the hard part first. But because you're full of self-doubt and you have issues that run deep, you're going to mm. be inclined to say, I'm not going to try again. But God is saying, have faith. Don't give up. Don't give in. Try again. Because the first time you attempt to diet, you may not make it. You may not be able to succeed at it. But you try again. The first time you attempt to walk on the treadmill, you may feel as though your heart is going to burst out of your chest. But try it again tomorrow. You might try to talk to that friend who is angry with you and you know they have a reason and you love them and you don't want to give up on the friendship, but you try again, even if they block you. Even if they block you, make every effort, pray for them and ask God to give you another opportunity, another way in so that you can be a blessing. Oh my, my. somebody said up. they had... Somebody said up. they have goosebumps. Somebody put a fire emoji in the chat. Somebody said, this is so real right now. This is so practical. This is fire. They are, they are thanking you in the try again. Hashtag try again try is trending again. in the chat. Try again. Try again. Don't, because an don't. excuse is not an option. This is, we're, we're living in excuseless existence. So an excuse is not an option. So we've got Listen, to try a different way. You know, when, when Moses went, oh gosh, when Moses went to Pharaoh, it was the the, said, the no. miracle or the plague was successful, but it didn't work. He had to no. try again. Try again. He had to keep coming. He had to keep had coming. To. Ah, I receive it. I receive it. I'm trying my best to stay on my notes, but I receive it. I receive it. Amen. Uh let me let me Amen. let me let me shift here. Let me ask this. <clears throat> is you know, in this whole try again. There is, you said it, you know, somebody's going to get on the treadmill and they feel like they, they, their heart's going to burst out of their chest. There's a, there's a dread, there's a trepidation, there's a fear, there's a, mm -hmm. you know, there's, a, there's, there's something that accompanies, am I an imposter? Am, am, I, am I, you know, am I really going to do this? Is this really going to be my new normal? Is, am I really going to walk in this thing that God is calling me to do that I really can't do outside of what God is adding to me? In my weakness, he says I, he, he's made strong, but 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 I really, really feel that weakness right now. And so there's this dread. <clears throat> there's this lack of faith, if you will, or 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 better yet, just just, just a trepidation. But is it a, a sign of a lack of faith? The, the fact that I feel dread. inadequate if I, yeah. I, I that I that I fear I'm getting up in the morning and it's like, OK, I got to I got to do the workout. Am I am I unfaithful? Does that is that a sign of me saying I'm I'm really not believing what God has said of me simply because I have that fear? Well, here's the thing. Uh, no, I do not think that dread is a sign of a lack of faith. Dread is mm. not a lack of faith. It, it it is a side effect of fear. Dread is a side effect of fear. 
When we fear outcomes, whatever the outcome may be when we're facing a situation, when we dread facing the experience where outcomes are uncertain, we're going to have a sense of dread. We dread bad news. We dread the biopsy report. We mm. dread the results of the CAT scan or the PET scan. We dread when the doctor comes into the room to tell us the prognosis for a family member. We dread these things. We dread that meeting that the boss has called with us alone. Uh, dread hitches itself to fear, and we often pull it around like a little red wagon because fear and dread are akin. But God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Oh so oh even my. when we feel a sense of dread, we need to let that sense of dread be the impetus for us to lunge forward into what God has for us. Because Satan uses dread to try to prevent us like a roadblock from pursuing the course that God is putting us on. Yeah. I, I was sharing with you earlier, our family is in the midst of a crisis right now. And yeah. Um, yeah. we're facing the impending death of one of my loved ones. And yesterday we were, um, my siblings and I, and my, my nieces and nephews, and my daughter, we were all in a chat talking about funeral arrangements. And this was about the, and I, I worked a, I worked from 6 a.m. yesterday till 9 p.m. because one of the other deans was sick. And so I worked her shift in mine. And in the midst of all of that, I'm trying to work out funeral arrangements. And I have this sense of dread. And it, and it, it occurred to me in the midst of all of that, as I was complaining and making excuses for why I didn't think I was going to even be able to get up this morning as early as I wanted to. It occurred to me that God knew, he knew that I would be right where I am right now when I was asked to be a part of this, this mm. whole excuseless theories. God knew. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know, but God knew. God knew when my loved one's life would take a serious turn for the worse. God knew that all of these different ingredients would be thrown into the melting pot of my life right now. And so if God allowed all of these things to happen at the same time, I don't need to dread or fear because yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of shadow death, of I will fear no evil for thou art with me. With me is with what me. cancels dread with me cancels dread. I don't have to dread walking into this meeting with my boss because God is with me. Oh. I don't have to fear walking into the hospital room because God is with me, was there before oh. I got there, has already begun working out the situation so that not only will I survive this, I will thrive from it so that I can help somebody else because of my experience. Mm. Once we begin to see the outcomes, I want to put it like this. God allowed Moses to have to go before Pharaoh. And I'm sure Moses dreaded going before Pharaoh the first time. But once he began to see the outcomes that God set in motion, I have this feeling that Moses, each time he went to the palace with his cane, he had a mm -hmm. little bit more swagger. Come on. As trust in God increases, on. On. dread decreases yes. because yes. fear decreases. So oh, do man. not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's what God is saying. He's saying, I'm with you. Mm. Leave dread, leave dread on uh, in, the, in the, put dread in the trash because yeah, dread yeah. is not going to give you strength. Dread is going to make you cower. And we don't cower before anything because we <sighs> serve the God of the universe. He's my father. If, if literally my father were the bank president, do you think that I would fear going into the bank to get money? No, you wouldn't. So Ever. the God of the universe is your father. Why do we dread anything on this earth? <laughs> God's presence cancels dread. Oof. As God increases and our trust in God increases, dread should decrease. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, somebody, some in the chapter, Pastor Snell outlines how how deadly dread can be. Yeah, I don't. I. I. I do, can you hear me still? I can. I can. Hear okay, you. go ahead. Continue. Yes. Continue. He outlines how how dreadful uh, how how it can be. Continue. So he 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 outlines how how dread can 
throw you off of the plan that God has for you, the strategy that God has put in. If you dread it, like he talked about hitting the snooze button and yeah. we don't hit the snooze button because we're so tired, but we hit the snooze button because we dread the mountain of responsibilities that await us once our foot hits the floor. But if we recognize that God is with me, as I look out and I see two uh, groundhogs frolicking in the grass, <laughs> the bane of my existence. Come on. If we, if we recognize the fact that God woke you up this morning because he has a purpose and a plan for you, you don't have to hit the snooze because God is already working out the end of your day before you start it. Mm. And the challenge becomes, am I going to use excuses like, I'm so exhausted, I'm so tired, I can't handle all of this. Are we, gonna, are we going to allow those excuses to prevent us from doing what God has for us to do? Or are we going to say, God, give me strength, enable me, encourage me, uplift me. This morning I was talking to uh, wow. one of my best friends and I was telling her, I said, I'm just so tired. Uh, and I, I, and, the, and the, the Bible says, ask the Savior to help you. And she said, girl, that's for him. I was too tired to even realize that I, I said, <laughs> it, it, the Bible says, but the song does say, ask the savior to help you comfort, strengthen and heal you. you he yes. is, he is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. He and if you recognize you. the fact that you're hitting the snooze on God, carrying you through something, you'll stop mm. hitting it. If yes. I'm hitting the snooze on my blessing, if I recognize that I'm hitting the snooze on seeing God's power at work in my life today. My word. You're putting pause on God's <sighs> power. So we <sighs> cannot allow dread to allow us to hit snooze on the blessings that God has for us. My because we goodness. fear the insurmountable, seemingly insurmountable task that is ahead of us. Man, listen, there's a, there's a line you shared there with me, with me, cancels dread ah uh, yeah. that's a whole hashtag that's a whole movement with in and me. of itself i want that on a t-shirt i want that with on some me. sweatpants i want that with on a hoodie me. with me with me cancels with me. dread cancels oh if somebody gets that into their spirit today if somebody shifts their perspective around the hard things that are in their lives that they need to face first in the morning recognizing who is with them with you with you. Ooh, there is a mm -hmm. shift in thinking. Uh, uh, you will stop putting pause on God's power. Stop yeah. hitting the snooze button on seeing on your, God's tangible power at work in your at life. At work in your life. My goodness. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's, that's something to shout about right there. That is something to shout about right there. Oh, you my goodness. You are allowing fear to interrupt the program. So, so here it is. This is the last question. This is the last question. And this has been a whole word. Somebody said, this is, this is a rewatch, a must rewatch. And I'm definitely going to go back and rewatch this Praise again God. as well. Praise this God. is, this is, this is our final questions. Uh, because now we, now that we know who is with us, how do we go on the offensive? So when, when going up against Pharaohs in our lives, how do we arm ourselves? What are the weapons of our warfare? <laughs> well, they're not Come carnal. On. They're not they're carnal. Not carnal. <laughs> they're not carnal. They're not carnal. Talk to us. Talk to us. I think the first thing we have to do is, is um, disarm the doubt. Disarm mm. the doubt. Uh, we often panic at the thought of facing pharaohs because we focus on how we may have failed in past times, how horribly this can go. And so we doubt. If we mm. realize that we are not going up against pharaoh in our own strength, however, Mm. If we recognize that Moses, when he went before Pharaoh, he was not alone. That yeah. rock, that that staff that he had was yeah, yeah, like yeah. the. It was the visible, the visible, um, the visible presence of God, the <sighs> visible presence of God. And so, if if we recognize that as as we're going up against Pharaoh, we're not going up against Pharaoh in our own strength and with our own strategy. Half the battle is already won. We go armed with the power of God in the name of the Lord, by not by our power or might, but by his spirit. And if I enter any situation that requires supernatural strength, I don't have to worry about my own strength because I know that supernatural strength is available to me. 
And I, if I try to take my own strength into a battle where supernatural strength is required, I, it's mm. like going to a gunfight with a butter knife. With a butter knife. But oh, I have the opportunity to have God's power with me. And if, mm. God, if I recognize that the power of God is with me, I'm going in the name of the Lord. I'm going by the power of God and by his spirit. Then I am armed with everything that I need. I'm armed because I disarmed doubt so yeah, that the yeah. army of God, the army of God can go with me. The army yeah. of God is with me. And, and people often, um, people have often said to me, oh, Linda, you're so brave because I've, I'm, I'm well acquainted with death. I've had a lot of hardship and I don't believe that I'm brave. I don't think it's my bravery, but oh, you're brave. I, I'm not brave. I just have enough sense to recognize that God as is at work in my life. <laughs> I, I, if I have any sense at all, I have sense enough to know that the power of God is at work in my life. So I'm not brave. I just have a clue. Mm. I have a mm. clue. I understand you... that God is with me. Yes. 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 There's there's you have insight. You have perspective. Uh, you, you can see what the enemies of your life can't see. And that is who is with you. You, you the have army the army of God. Come on, come like on, the prophet, come on. When, 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 when the, the, the veil was lifted. Yeah. And all yeah. of the armies were made yeah. visible to the servant. That's Bible, right. Yes. That's how we have to live. There are unseen armies at work on our behalf. So disarm the doubt because you're not going alone. You're going with God and his army. I have to say this. Um, Moses, I'm sure, didn't roll up on Pharaoh with a cane and a fedora like he was going to a player's ball. Please say that. Um, you know, he, 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 he didn't roll up in there with, with, a, with, a, with a, a, a floor length mink hang, draped over his shoulder. Come on. No, he didn't. And a, and a cane with, with Pharaoh on it. He didn't do that. Moses had a staff and the power of the Lord God Almighty. Mm. And that is what allowed him to walk in with swagger on mm. the repeated trips to, to talk to the man who thought that he was more powerful and that his gods, little G, were stronger than the big G. Mm-hmm. The big G. And so if you recognize that you have the big G Come on. at work in your life. Come on. The you're almighty. not going to worry about the little G's. The little G's. <sighs> you don't worry about the little G's. No. Because God is more powerful than the situation you're facing. And if he's with you, you, you don't need to fear. Man, man, You need to just man. disarm the doubt. Disarm, disarm the, the doubt. doubt. Disarm the doubt. Disarm the doubt. Uh, there's there's a lot to 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 unpack here. There's there's a lot that we will we would need to go back and 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 check this out again and make sure we take proper notes. I I saw a comment from somebody. Uh, uh, Jackie Harden said this: uh, "Fear is what if, faith mm -hmm. is even is if. even if." Ooh, Jackie. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, good. If, Jackie, you got it. You've got yeah, it there because you got if, it. If, if you look at the story of the Hebrew boys, mm. um, they reversed the the, the, the excuse. Yeah, they they did. said, "We know that the God who we serve is able to to deliver us from this fiery furnace," and they didn't say, "So we can't do this." They said, "But if not, but if not, if he doesn't." They didn't say we're going to bow down. They said, no. if not, that's right. If not, that's right. Even if he doesn't, we're still going to stand on the side of God and we will not bow down. Even we are going to if. disarm the doubt. Even wow. if wow, fear is what if faith is even if even and the if. Hebrew boy said, but if not, we know what oh, God gosh. can do, but if we he doesn't he can choose do this. to do it. What's that Wendley Phipps song? If he chooses not, not to, to move, move in the way we the pray way. he would, I'm confident, confident he's working all together all to for my good. I will stand. <laughs> because Upon he's, his, he's able. He's Mercy. Able. And that's Mercy. why ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. He's with he, you. He he's with is, you. 
he that's that's the word for somebody today. That's and where so you that's, can do the hard part first. You can do yeah. the hard part first because yeah. God is with you. Because God is with you. Because what God is with you. Listen, as we there is a we're going to do two things real quick here as we get ready to close this thing out. I I we definitely want to pray for the hard thing. The hard thing. I want I want you in the chat if you can, if you if you feel so inspired and inclined to put the hard thing. This is prayer time. We're getting ready to go into prayer mm-hmm. time. I want I want to play the little music here in just a second. We get, we want you to put the hard thing in the whatever the hard thing is. Whatever the hard thing is in your life. Whatever the hard thing is, we want you to put that in the chat. And if you can't if you can't type it, you know, if you, I, I get it. Sometimes we can't type it out loud. But if you can't type it, just put hard thing. We're going to be praying over the hard thing in just a moment. We're going to ask mm-hmm. Dean to pray over the, the hard thing. But even as we get ready to pray over the hard thing, Dean, we are going to be praying for you. Several people Thank have you. put into the chat. We need to Thank pray for, for, for Dean Linda today. Uh, going through this difficult season, My we family. got a chance to yes. talk at, in detail about it and definitely want to pray for you today. But we also are going to say a word, a prayer of thanks for you because you've come into this space today and you have absolutely God. been a blessing to the people of God. Uh, All 1,276 devices that are connected praise to this God. broadcast be, this be morning. Blessing. We don't be know be tell, how countless told how many others will be watching this on replay or are represented by this number. We are going to be praying for you. And I want to make sure right now that you are putting the hard thing. I see hard thing in the chat. I see unforgiveness and worry in the chat. Let, let's get to our prayer. Let's mm-hmm. get to our prayer scene here. It's coming up. It's coming up. Oh my. Okay. So hard thing. I see hard thing in the chat. I'm going to put, put some of these up hard thing in the chat. Pray for my friends to know God. Uh, I see, I see a lot of, of a heart. This that's okay. That's okay. My, my, uh, somebody put my marriage and health. Okay. We'll be praying for this. All right. Praying for myself to hold on. We'll be praying for this Amen. hard thing, total surrender, hard thing, very hard thing. We will be praying for this. Praying for comfort for Dean. Yes, definitely. We will pray for for, for Dean as well. Uh, pray, pray for me. Storms just keep pounding on me. This is a hard thing. This is a hard thing. Moving forward through the fog. Hard things. Mm. We're praying for hard things this morning. Getting up early to exercise consistently. I just changed mm-hmm. it slightly, Daphne. That's Instead of constantly, thing. I'm saying consistently. That's a hard thing. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be praying for those hard things this morning. Mm-hmm. Family crisis, Kimberly Russell says. Hard thing hard thing Mm -hmm. job family friends hard things hard things we're praying for all the hard things this morning please pray for the hard things marcia sterling says uh uh uh, help help me make the phone call come on we don't Mm. need to know but that's a hard thing and we're going to be praying with you wendy we're going to be praying with you wendy uh pray that god will deliver me from the hard thing in my life listen timothy Mm. we're praying with you we're praying with you we're praying with you hard things trusting god I, i think i missed it uh, they're moving so fast. Trusting God, uh, despite my circumstances, sure, is, is 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 a is a hard thing. D- despite what you see, despite the, the, exactly. your current reality, you're praying that 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 God would would yeah well, hard thing Im- immigration and ministry, hard things, unforgiveness, doubt, fear, worry, hard things, hard things. My marriage, total surrender, my health. My sister, as she goes through her chemo, these are hard Mm, things, mm, Andrea. We are praying with you. Hard things, hard things. Hyacinth says, the Lord, Lord, you know my struggles. Hard things, Mm, hard Hard things, things. hard things. Trusting God through the storm, hard things, hard things, hard things, hard things. My my family's conversion and conviction and obedience, hard hard things. That's a hard thing. Ah, let go and let God, Greg says. These are hard things. Husband's healing, Yvette says, hard things, hard things. You are, you guys are placing them in the chat. I want to say this. I'm not going to be be able to put all of them on screen. We're going to ask Dean to pray in just a second. Uh, April, April author says self-esteem, letting go of unnecessary people, consistency, family, business, money management, hard things. My sweet April, my girl. My goodness. We're praying for the hard things this morning. Praying. 
praying. We're praying for hard things this morning. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed by the chat. I'm overwhelmed. We've all I got see a it. hard part we're facing. Yes, we do. We've got yes, a hard we do. thing that, is, that we're up against. Ooh, and if we, if we just look at the hard thing and not at the one that can deliver us from it, we're, yeah. we're going to miss, miss out on the, on the opportunity to see God bring us through that thing. Um, we just have to recognize God's power is with us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. how we face the hard yeah. things. That's how we face our foes and our fears. We don't mm. look for excuses for why we can't face the giants. We look to God as the reason why we can, can. face the giants, the hard I, things. I got to say this. I say this and then we're going to ask Dean to pray. The, the incorrect conclusion is that the book is saying the hard thing is not a hard thing. The it's incorrect hard. conclusion is that <laughs> getting up early and doing the hard thing makes the That's hard the thing hard easier. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the hard thing is the secondary hard thing. Do you know what the first hard thing is? Doing the hard thing. Yes. And and yes. I want to I want to free it. somebody to recognize this is hard. It, we're not trying to oversimplify it. We're not trying to undermine it. No. And it is hard. And we are going it's to be hard. praying that you that you are able to do the hard thing. Dean, I'm going to keep putting comments up, but we're going to ask yes. that you pray for the people of God this and, morning. And and because we know that we we are being called to do the hard part first, it's because mm. early in the morning, as a pastor pointed out, early in the morning after we've come out of our prayer closet or after yeah. we've had our worship, that yeah. is the time that we have the most energy and the mo we feel the power of God the most, most to be able to approach that hard thing. So from this moment, this morning, we're going to start working on doing that hard part, facing that hard thing, yeah. dealing with that, hard, that critical thing, because we know that right now, there's no time better than right now to see God's power at work in our lives. Father, we've mm. come to you in the name of Jesus, who showed us how to do the hard part first. He left heaven and came to Calvary that we might be saved. And that certainly was a hard thing, but he did that first so that in the aftermath of that, we would know that he cares and that you care and that he's with us and that you are preparing a place for us and that you've made the promise that if you're preparing a place, you will come again to receive us unto yourself that where you are, there we may be also. That's Amen. how we overcome the hard things, by recognizing that even the hard things are temporary. And that if we will allow you, God, to get us through these things, you will take us on to the next, and then the next, and the thing that follows it, building our faith and our strength and our, and our trust in you yes, as you God. bring us through every situation. You've seen all of the prayer requests, all of the, the list of hard things, some that couldn't even be typed or uttered. But you know what they are, God, and I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would give us the faith in you and the trust in you to allow you to use your power in our lives to bring us through these things. Yes, God. None of us wants to face the hard part. None of us wants to, to stand in, in front of the casket. None of us <laughs> wants to stand over the sick bed. None of us wants to go to the to pick up the pink slip. None of us wants to receive the, the, the printout of all of the maladies and all of the sickness that seems to be terminal. But you, God, are the great physician. You are the best lawyer we could ever have. You said you would send the comforter, so you've made provision for every hard thing. Mm. You've made provision for us to be able to do the hard part first because you showed us the example of doing the hard part first. We ask God that you would forgive us where we've doubted. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would allow us to cancel doubt, help us to put dread in its place, Yes, and God. trust that you are going to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We don't even know how to pray as we ought, but God, the Holy Spirit, even right now, is, is groaning for us. Mm. Groaning for us. Groaning for us. That we might make it through what you are going to bring us through. We yes, want to say thank you, God, for this word. We want to thank you for your presence. And we want to thank you for the outcomes Good or bad, God. Good or bad. we trust you enough to know that all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are called according, called to, according his to his purposes. purposes. In Jesus' name, amen.
And Father, we just pause here in prayer just a moment longer to lift up your servant, Dean Linda Anderson, who you have used in a powerful way to bless your people with a message and a reminder about how we can tackle the hard things, about how we can disarm the doubt, about how with us or with me cancels the dread. God, we thank you for the message this morning. And we pause to pray for your messenger. Thank you, God. She is in a season, in a moment of loss, pending loss. And we ask God that you would bless her, that you give her a peace that passes all understanding, Mm -hmm. both her and her family members who have to turn to the undesirable task of final preparations. Mm. God, I ask that you touch her, not just in this particular task, but in other areas of her life where there are hard things, in other areas of her life where she is pouring into students, in other areas of her life where you're calling her back to school. God, we pray that you would touch her and use her, that through this vessel, we would see a picture of what excuseless living looks like. What it looks like when, when our frailty is matched with your sovereignty. Yes. Yes. When, when our little is, is made much when we place it in the master's hand. That we might see a testimony that your strength is truly made perfect in our weakness. God, we pray for her this morning and we pray for the gathering number of those who are worshiping with us online today. Thank you, God. Thank you. Father, in those places that they have placed on screen that, that, that you can fill in the blank instead of hard thing, you know what it is specifically and with all the details, God, I pray that you give them power to do the hard thing and to live in the excuseless realm of life. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in this space, for what you are calling us to, for the army that you are creating on the earth. Yes, the army. When our collective and individual testimonies are unleashed, people will simply say, what do I need to do to live that kind of life? And we'll be careful, God. We will be careful not to soak up the praise for ourselves. We will be careful in those moments to recognize I shouldn't even be here. But for the God of the universe. We'll be careful to give you all the praise, the glory and the honors that you richly deserve. For we've asked these things and we've prayed them in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I want to give this reminder that Pastor Snell says that excuseless living is not wishful. It is intentional. You have to be intentional in your pursuit of living that life. And so if you're going to do the hard part first, the time to do it is now. Don't delay. Delay Mm. only increases anxiety. Trust God now and do the hard part first. Do the hard part first. Dean, I just, you know, every time, every time you come through, it's... Praise God. God is using you, and I just want to affirm you this morning. Thank you for being a willing vessel in his hand to to, to speak to the people of God this morning. I want to say to our students who are watching... Uh, your chaplain, Chaplain Andrew Pelleggi and pa- Dr. Leslie Pollard has, has made it possible for you to get some worship credit. Yeah, I had the wrong code. Credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what this is like, Dean. <laughs> yeah, I had the wrong code on the screen earlier, so I've, 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 I've adjusted that. And so you have the correct code on there right now. We're going to leave that up for you guys. I want to say to those who are listening and watching as you get ready for your day today, some of you, if you are part of our faith tradition, you're probably going to get ready to go to church. Others, you may have, you know, free time and you may have uh, moments where you can sit and say, okay, okay, God, I'm going to just stay right here in this moment. I'm going to just sit right here in this, in this season. I'm, I'm going to 
mm, I want to hear from you what you are calling me to do. I encourage you to do just that this morning. Amen. I encourage Amen. you to do just that this morning. And, and, and for those who, who can, we'd love for you to join us here at the Oakwood University Church in a, in a little while, in, a, in about an hour, I think it is. Stuff is falling. I don't know where it's falling from. In about an hour. <laughs> Maybe it's showers of blessings. <laughs> showers of blessings. In about an hour, I think it is, we we will have uh we will have our our our, our worship experience and it'll start off with uh with uh, the tailors who will do our Sabbath school and then we will go from Sabbath school into the uh a little bit of a children's moment with uh, Pastor Mark Raphael and then we will go into our worship time. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Snell is our speaker today, and he will Amen. be speaking under the title, take what's yours. Oh my. Amen. <laughs> We're that, still in the excuseless that's got theme. That's potential right there. Come on. That's got potential. That's got potential. That's got potential. We're still in the excuseless theme. I, I, I got, we got to, I got to dash. I got to go. I can't stay. I, I, I'm God already over you. my time, but I want to say this. I got to go thank get you. these girls out to church. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you to, to all of you that came. We do not take for granted that there are over 1300 devices connected with us this morning uh, for God this moment of, of prayer. Thank you for being with us today. And we hope that we'll see you later today in any of the other broadcasts or that we see you tomorrow morning at eight o'clock for another time of prayer under the theme, Excuseless. Amen.